My name is Alison Banfield. I was born in 1937 and this is a little bit of what I remember about Hurricane Janet. I was around 18 when Janet struck the island. We didn't have a lot, an awful lot of warning about it. Uh, it, it the days when you got a, a week's warning that the hurricane was approaching hadn't come as yet. And everybody more or less went to, my father went to work and they were expected to be at work because he was with the hardware um, division of the shop. And people were rushing in for plywood and nails and batteries and those bits and pieces that were important to boarding up and making sure the houses were as safe as they could make them. And we were very worried because it was beginning to, to blow up a bit before he got back home and my mother was running around doing her nut. <laughs> but everyone was home then and we, we had battened down our house. Our house, we were lucky in that it's an old type of house and it had outdoor shutters and, and the glass windows and wooden shutters on the inside. So we could put all that to, to in, in motion and we were pretty secure. But other people um, it, in our district, uh, there's uh, an area of new bills and the houses weren't so lucky. I don't think they um, attached their roofs very well and some lost the roof completely and some lost part of it. And friends of ours spent their, um, the, the, the husband, wife and children spent the, the hurricane under the dining room table sheltering because the roof went. But we, we it, it was a funny time, I think for most Bajans, it was a kind of excitement and a fear, a, a, a mixture sort of thing because I don't think very many people had experienced anything in the way of hurricane. We'd heard about them, but luckily we were always seemed to be missed, you know. And when this one was coming straight at us, everybody was, well, kind of anticipating what would be and what would not be, you know. But we were lucky in a way, part of the island got struck part of the island didn't even know it had happened but the seas got up and um, anywhere that was they could get through they came over onto the roads the sand the little boulders bits of moss and things like that all across the road and the careenage in town, a lot of the fishing vessels had gone in seeking um, shelter and that was a bit of a mistake because when the, the sea rushed into the careenage it forced the boats all to, to, to collide with each other and they suffered quite a bit of damage as well as the lighters which were used in those days to ferry the goods from the, the um, steamships in Carlisle Bay into the town proper. So there was a lot, a lot of damage actually in the careenage and you could see in Bridgetown how, how the, the sea had washed up between the, the, in the alleyways between the buildings and things like that. The, the hurricane hunters would go out and send back information and you were you just had to go by that the police stations had sirens and when they got um, notification they would send off a siren warning that a hurricane was approaching and then another warning when it actually expected to strike and then there was usually at the end of it all an all clear warning when they thought everything had passed and you were free to go. 
we could look through a little window at the back of our house and all the houses around here were shingled roofs in those days and you could watch the, the wind sort of lift the shingles and they'd flop back down. And I think having the shingle roofs um, saved a lot of the older houses because one or two of the shingles might have broken off or a patch of them come off. But galvanized, where it, when it loosened, it tended to strip quite a bit of the roof off, you know. But I, I guess we lost a lot of the chattel houses. They suffered an intense that thing because some of them were just on little stone props and they were blown off. Some of them lost their roof, some of them collapsed upon each other. And they, 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 I think they suffered a lot of, uh, of damage. But then again, some of them could be put back together again because they were their houses that were built in sections and you could take them apart, move them and erect them somewhere else. That side, St. Joseph and, and, the, and the north of the island, hardly knew that the, we were having a hurricane. It really was the, the St. Philip Christ Church, Bridgetown area that really experienced the worst of it, you know. I had just left school and was about to start a job, so I was enjoying my last summer vacation, more or less. <laughs> but well, I went to work in an accountant's office as a typist, and then I left there and I went to England and did nursing. I returned to Barbados and did nursing for a while and then I went back to an accountant's office and to work again so I, I went a cycle. Well life in, in Barbados in those days was very much more low-key low than it is nowadays. People more or less went to school, got a job, worked, and most of them worked probably in that job until they retired, you know, or, or would sit, maybe not that job, but that firm that worked there, maybe come in as a junior and work their way up and retire from the firm. But, of course, there was a cinema, there was no TV, we had um, rediffusion. That was a lifeline for most people. That was a good service. It had brought to English news and they had um, local programs and they had serial programs. and. Moral, and the reception was very, very good. You could have, a few people had tune-in radios and usually they were full of static. It was, you really had to strain your ears to, to hear what was actually happening, you know. Well, my immediate family was my mother, father and myself. I was born in Barbreeze Hill and then Move to Government Hill, mm -hmm. but I, I've lived in this house for about 70 years, so you could say more or less my lifetime. <laughs> there wasn't as much distraction nowadays. You have the cinemas, you have the nightclubs, you have every day which way something is going on, something is happening. And people are, from one thing to another, there's not the time for the interconnection and the friendships that, that or close, closeness that I think people felt in those days. 